What if I told you a major league baseball player pitched a no hitter while high on LSD? It was easier to pitch with the LSD because I was so used to medicating myself. That's the way I was dealing with the fear of failure. You know, if Doc's pitching, you know it's high. How high, high is it? Welcome to the coolest breakdown. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Go ahead and hit the subscribe and like button for me. So in this video, I'm going to break down three reasons why we should never forget this legendary story of Doc Ellis. Number one, the level of difficulty and significance of just pitching a no hitter. And on top of that, while being intoxicated on acid, it's just wild. Number two, the actual backstory of what led up to this historical event. And number three, the overall impact of drug consumption in Major League Baseball. So let's get to it. So Doc Ellis, in his MLB career, through 11 seasons, he accumulated a 138-119 record, a 3.6 earned run average, and 1,136 strikeouts. He was a one-time All-Star and won a World Series with the Pittsburgh Pirates all in the year of 1971. He was overall a good starting pitcher to have in your rotation. And when he joined the Yankees, in 1976, he helped lead the team to an American League pennant and was named the league's comeback player of the year. Ellis had five distinct pitches, a fastball, a curveball, a changeup, a palm ball, and what Ellis called a sliding fastball, which was different from just a slider. So right here, is a visual representation of being high on LSD. Now imagine pitching a major league baseball game while experiencing this. <laughs> Crazy. Now what led up to this historical event is that the Pirates flown to San Diego on Thursday, June 11th. Ellis visited a friend in Los Angeles and used LSD. Thinking it was still Thursday, he took a hit of it on Friday at noon. And his friend's girlfriend actually reminded him at 2 p.m. that day that he was scheduled to pitch that night. Ellis actually flew from Los Angeles to San Diego at 3 p.m. and arrived at the stadium at 4 p.m. The game started at 6.05 p.m. Ellis mentions that he threw the no-hitter despite being unable to feel the ball or see the batter or even see the catcher clearly. His catcher, Jerry May, actually wore reflected tape on his fingers to help Ellis to see the pitching signals. Ellis was also aided by excellent defensive plays by his infielders and outfielders. Now to dig deeper in the claim that he was actually on LSD during his no-hitter, it's overall a very mixed response to the claims. Bob Smizik of the Pittsburgh Press, who was actually the first person to break the story in 1984, he believes Doc Ellis's version of the events that day. Although Smizik did not fully witness the game in person, he does believe it. Now, Bill Christine, also of the Pittsburgh Press, he doesn't fully believe Ellis' story, and he was out actually at the game that day. And Christine was a very close beat writer who really who claims that he lived with the team that year. He was very close with the with the ball club that year. And now on the other side, Doc Ellis' close friend, Scipio Spinks, 
a pitcher for the Houston Astros, has mentioned that he has zero doubt that Ellis was telling the truth about his LSD use, as he was very familiar with Ellis's strong drug habits, including the use of LSD. Now it seems that Doc Ellis LSD high peaked around 2 to 3 p.m. that day. And by the time he took the mound that day, around 6 p.m., he was coming down from his high, but he definitely wasn't completely sober. At this time, Ellis's most likely had a very strong tolerance to LSD, so his highs probably weren't for that long, especially if he only popped one pill before he took the mound that day. Now, the overall impact of drug consumption in Major League Baseball. Players like Manny Ramirez, Alex Rodriguez, and Roger Clemens didn't even need to use any type of drugs to improve their performances because all three of them were on paths to the Hall of Fame before they even started to take any type of PEDs. Allegedly. Doc Ellis's close friends and fellow MLB members were also taking LSD at that time in the 70s. And this is very similar to today and to the steroid era. How if someone close to you or someone on your team is taking some sort of drug or a performance enhancement, it's much easier for you to be influenced to take it too. Now, Doc Ellis had a handful of good pitches. He was also backed up by a great defense. So it seems as if the LSD got in the way more than it helped him on this day. And to add, Doc Ellis himself stated that it wasn't the prettiest no hitter. I hit a couple guys. It was an ugly no hitter. I got letters about it, but it was a no no. Now in closing, Doc Ellis did have an off-the-wall kind of personality, and he enjoyed going against the grain, so it was pretty dope and actually fitting that his most memorable moment is him pitching a no-hitter while under the influence. Now if you like content like this, I would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button liked, comment, and shared this video as well.